Hello, my name is Vasilios Ifantes and I would like to welcome you to my presentation on a two-stage simulated annealing-based scheduling algorithm for a make and pack production plant. The research leading to this publication was performed within the project COPRO, which received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program. The work was done with Procter & Gamble, a company from the consumer goods industry, producing a wide variety of products for different markets. In this contribution, two different layouts of a make and pack production plant are considered. The plant consists of several parallel lines, and each line consists of two stages, the formulation stage and the packing stage. In the first stage, the formulation stage, intermediate products are made and then afterwards sent to the packing stage resulting in the final products. In the first layout, the coupled layout, the two stages for each line operate simultaneously and are synchronized. In the second layout, the decoupled layout, we introduce an intermediate buffer between the two stages. This means that after intermediate products are made in the formulation stage, they are first stored in the buffer before they are packed in the corresponding packing stage. This results in a desynchronized operation of the two stages, so they don't operate simultaneously. The coupled layout exhibits certain drawbacks compared to the decoupled layout. In the case of the coupled layout, the two stages, so the formulation stage and the packing stage, have to be synchronized as they are operated simultaneously. This means that the faster stage of the two has to be slowed down in order to match the processing rate of the slower stage. Furthermore, if a changeover occurs in any of the two stages, an idle time is needed in the other stage, even if no changeover is performed there at the time. Additionally, the coupled layout provides relatively small room for improvement. This means that a benefit can only be gained by improving the scheduling of the plant. This leads to an advantage of the coupled layout, which is that the scheduling that has to be performed is relatively simple compared to the decoupled layout. The main advantage of the decoupled layout is that no synchronization is needed between the two stages. This means that both stages can operate at their maximum processing rates. Furthermore, the changeovers in the two stages are also decoupled. This means that if a changeover occurs in one of the two stages, the other stage can still remain in operation. Additionally, a smaller investment is needed in order to increase the throughput of the plant compared to adding more production lines. Of course, the decoupled layout also exhibits certain disadvantages. For each product, either the formulation stage or the packing stage exhibits the slower processing rates. This means that the bottleneck of the plant varies from product to product, so none of the two stages can be neglected for the scheduling. This directly ties into the second disadvantage, which is that the scheduling, in the case of the decoupled layout, increases in complexity, necessitating an optimization-based solution. The goal of the scheduling problem is to allocate a set of orders i to a set of lines j and sequence the operations of the allocated orders the objective of the optimization is to minimize the make span of the schedule. Some constraints include fixed processing times for all orders on the lines, sequence dependent changeover times, eligibility between orders and lines, and buffer capacity constraints for the decoupled layout. The most important parameters of the scheduling problem are the processing time of each order and the changeover time between two different orders. The scheduling problem is solved in two stages. After receiving the input data, which consists of the set of orders, including their processing and changeover times, as well as the set of lines, a random initialization of the schedule is performed. After that, in the first stage, the allocation of the orders to the lines is performed. After this stage is completed, the allocation is fixed and the schedule is refined in the second stage, which performs a sequencing of the orders on their allocated lines. After the second stage is fixed, the final schedule is obtained. The optimization is performed by simulated annealing, which is a single solution-based meter heuristic optimization algorithm. It is based on the physical phenomenon of metal annealing, in which a metal is first heated, resulting in a state of high energy where its atoms are allowed to move freely. After cooling, a state of minimum energy is reached. 
the analogy with this uh, physical phenomenon in the simulated annealing algorithm is the acceptance of worse solutions according to a temperature dependent probability in order to escape local optima of the optimization problem. Here you can see the general scheme of the simulated annealing algorithm. The problem is initialized with an initial solution and an initial temperature. First, from this initial solution, a neighbor solution is generated. If now this neighbor solution is better than the current solution, it becomes the new solution. If the termination criterion is not met, we reduce the temperature and generate a new neighbor solution. Now, if the neighbor solution is worse than the current solution, we compute a temperature-based probability function. And according to this probability, we can accept the worst solution. If we accept the worst solution, it becomes the new solution, and we reduce the temperature again and generate a new neighbor solution. If the worst solution is not accepted, we again reduce the temperature and generate a new neighbor solution from the current solution. And this process repeats until the termination criterion is met, and then we receive the final solution of the simulated annealing algorithm. Let's look at some details of the simulated annealing algorithm. Suppose we have a general minimization problem where we try to minimize a function f of x. First, we initialize the problem with an initial solution x0 and an initial temperature t0. Then, at each iteration step k, we first compute the new solution xk from the current solution xk-1. After having obtained the new solution, we compute the temperature-dependent acceptance probability function. This function p is equal to 1 if the objective value of the new solution is better than the objective value of the current solution. Otherwise, it is computed through this exponential term, depending on the objective values of the two solutions and the temperature. The new solution is accepted if the value of the acceptance probability function is greater or equal to a uniformly distributed random number between 0 and 1. Otherwise, we keep the current solution. Then the temperature is updated depending on the initial temperature, a constant update parameter a, which is less than 1, and an exponential parameter h, which is increased after a fixed number of iterations. The optimization terminates when the temperature reaches a specified temperature threshold t min. An important aspect of each meter heuristic optimization algorithm is the representation of the solution. In our case, we represent the solution as a permutation of orders for each line. This corresponds to the sequence in which the orders are processed on the specific line. From this information, alongside the processing times for all orders and the change over time between different orders, a schedule can be computed. Another important aspect of meter heuristic optimization algorithms is the generation of neighbor solutions. As already discussed, our scheduling algorithm is divided into two different stages. In the first stage, the allocation of orders to lines is performed. And in the second stage, the sequencing of these orders within the lines takes place. The reasoning behind splitting our approach into two different stages is that the allocation of orders to lines has a far greater impact on the make span of the schedule compared to the sequencing of the orders. Here you can see an example of the generation of a neighbor solution in the allocation stage. First, the current solution is used to generate a list of orders. Afterwards, these orders are redistributed to the lines, respecting the line eligibility constraints. After the neighbor solution has been generated, the two solutions are evaluated based on their make span. Here you can see that the make span of the neighbor solution is better than the make span of the current solution, meaning that the current solution will be overwritten. Note that in this stage, no explicit sequencing decisions are made. The sequencing in the neighbor solution is a direct result of the created list of orders. After this stage terminates, the allocation of orders to lines is fixed and the algorithm proceeds to the second stage for the sequencing. After the termination of the first stage and the fixing of the allocation decisions, the schedule is further refined in the sequencing stage. In this stage, each line is optimized independently. Here you can see an example of how a neighbor solution is generated in the sequencing stage. The current solution is modified by changing the positioning of an order within the sequence. 
two solutions are again evaluated based on their make span. And as you can see here, the neighbor solution exhibits a better make span than the current solution. So the current solution is again overwritten. After the sequencing stage terminates, the final schedule is obtained. Up to now, we have only considered the situation of the coupled layout. For the decoupled layout, some extensions have to be made. First, we will show an example for the timing of operations in the decoupled layout. Suppose that at some point we want to schedule this order number two. Then the start of packing depends on the timing of the formulation operation and on the previously scheduled packing operation. Packing of order two can only start after the start of the formulation of this order, after the end of formulation minus the packing time of the order, or after the end of the previous packing operation plus the change over time between the two orders. Out of these three potential times, we have to choose the maximum time. So in this case, this is time C and the packing operation can start at this point. Furthermore, the buffer level has to be computed for the decoupled layout. This is here again demonstrated with an example where the formulation rate of an order is larger than its packing rate. Suppose that at some point we want to start a formulation operation. This means that the formulation stage starts feeding intermediate products into the buffer and the buffer level increases. Now, before the end of the formulation stage, we start a packing operation. This means that the packing stage starts withdrawing intermediate products from the buffer while the formulation stage is still feeding the buffer with intermediate products. As the formulation rate is larger than the packing rate, the buffer level still increases, but with a slower rate. Then when the formulation finishes, the remaining products are withdrawn from the buffer by the packing stage and the packing operation ends. Let's now look at some results of our scheduling algorithm. For the simulated annealing, an initial temperature of 15,000 was used, the parameter A was set to 0.9, and the exponential update parameter H starting at zero was increased by one each 1,000 iterations. On the top side, you can see a schedule provided by the plant's schedulers, and on the bottom side, you can see a schedule produced by our scheduling algorithm. You can see that our scheduling algorithm improves the make span of the schedule compared to the actual schedule. In addition to that, in our approach, the three lines finish more or less at the same time. This is beneficial compared to the actual schedule as it ensures a more balanced operation of the plant. In the case of the decoupled layout, both the operations of the formulation stage shown in the upper part of the gun chart and the operations of the packing stage shown on the lower part of the gun chart have to be scheduled. The make span in this case is further decreased due to the decoupling and the resulting desynchronized operation of the two stages. In addition, below you can see the resulting buffer profile, where you can see the amount of each individual order stored in the buffer, as well as the total amount of products stored in the buffer, indicated here by this black dotted line. Comparing the make span of the actual schedule provided by the plan schedulers to the ones obtained by our scheduling algorithm shows that significant improvements can be achieved. The decoupled layout provides greater improvements which can mainly be attributed to the higher processing rates due to the desynchronized operation of the two stages. As simulated annealing is a stochastic optimization algorithm, the reproducibility of the results has to be evaluated. Here you can see the evolution of the best solution for 10 different optimization runs. Even though the objective values of the initial solutions vary, you can see that all of the runs converge to a similar final solution in the end. This means that our results are reproducible. Also note that in this graph, the x-axis is displayed in a logarithmic scale. This shows that the algorithm reaches quite good solutions even after a few number of iterations compared to the total runtime of the algorithm. To summarize this presentation, a simulated annealing-based scheduling algorithm was developed for two different layouts of a make-and-pack production plant. 
This includes a coupled layout and a decoupled layout with an intermediate buffer. The algorithm consists of two different stages, an allocation stage and a sequencing stage. The optimization results show that significant improvements can be achieved compared to the actual schedule provided by the plan schedulers. Nevertheless, despite these improvements, the flexibility of the decoupled layout is still somewhat limited in this scenario. This refers to the fact that each unit of the formulation stage is still closely coupled to one unit in the packing stage. By allowing more flexibility and connecting each unit in the formulation stage to multiple units in the packing stage, even greater improvements can be achieved. The algorithm should therefore be extended to a more flexible decoupled layout. Additionally, parallelization and hybridization of the steps in the algorithm could enhance its computational performance. An example for the parallelization of steps would be the parallel sequencing of separate lines in the second stage of the algorithm. And an example for hybridization would be to use exact mathematical programming based approaches for the sequencing. Since we have additionally developed other solution approaches for the scheduling algorithm, such as genetic algorithms or hybrid methods combining different mixed integer linear programming models and heuristics, it would be interesting to compare these methods to the simulated annealing based scheduling algorithm developed in this contribution. Finally, the realization of a scheduling system at the real plant remains an open challenge. And with this, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. I invite you to read the full paper for further details and feel free to contact me regarding any questions. Finally, I would like to thank the European Union for the funding of the project COPRO, which led to this publication.